My name is Jeff Nippert, and in this video, I'm gonna be putting Christian Guzman through one of my most intense science-based pull workouts. Oh my God. Come on. I think I'm gonna drop it, but I... Rest oh. at the bottom and do one more. So our, for our first exercise, we're gonna try to really isolate the lats, specifically the stretched aspect. And so if you think about it, if you were gonna stretch your lat as much as possible, you wouldn't just lift your arms straight up. You would do this, right? To get a big stretch across yeah. here. So feel down here. I, yeah. You're gonna get the, a much bigger stretch here yeah. than you will here, yeah. for sure. So we're gonna try to mimic yeah. that by turning slowly <laughs> no, one, side no one ever said that. <laughs> there you go. So with this, you wanna turn your body in the, uh, yeah, in the direction of the arm that you're pulling with, mm -hmm. so that your arm is coming across your body and you're getting this deep stretch down here. So I'll grab here, right? So you're grabbing here, and yep. then you're twisting this way, so now you should feel that light up. There, there. you go. And then yep. lock in so everything is nice and stable. Yep. There. And you're gonna drive down to just the midline. A little More. further back. Yep. Good. And then keep your chest up. Side. Good, there you go, and now get a big stretch. Beauty. Oh, Beauty. wow, that's there you a go. good one. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. Damn. Do you have any, any tips for how to, where to pull? Like pull, pulling with elbow down? I mean, you do hook so with grip. this one, so normally I do it actually with a, the different handle. But wherever you feel comfortable, I would say to keep, for because the handle is like this, I'd say to keep your elbow somewhat out. Oh. So it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, so it's all, everything is in one straight line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that feels amazing. Yeah, good. That's good, like good. When, even when you're rolling out, you kind of like almost go to the side to get that yeah. same like full yeah. stretch motion. So here, turn. Yeah, there you go. Just turn. So now like the lat wraps around the rib cage, right? Good. Big stretch here. Perfect, bro. Yep, that's, that's really good. I love training like this. That's nice. Yeah, you look crispy, bro. Really? It feels Egg. so flat, bro. No, but it doesn't matter. You're at that point of leanness where like, yeah. even when, if you don't have a pump, the striations just come out. You, know, you almost look, see, you almost look leaner when you're flat. Yeah. The you never yeah. notice that? Because when you get a pump, the blood, the Scare blood myself. will fill in some of the striations. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually in like <laughs> the science space like world, there's not a, there's not a whole lot of like really like groundbreaking developments, but one of the most interesting new things is there's so many studies showing the value of the stretched aspect of the lift and long length partials. So in terms of hypertrophy. Mm. So like if you're thinking of what, well, so what would be a long, so when you think of partial reps, the, the kind of like previous dogma would have been full range of motion on everything, which is a pretty good rule of thumb for a new lifter, mm. but it seems that long length partials on many exercises is actually better than full range of motion. Now, I don't want to overstate the difference. You're, it's you're not two you're times better. Gosh, not, but, but for it is a, after it is a full si range? It is significantly better. Oh, wow. And so what's a long length partial? It would be like... It's a pec deck, for example. If you're doing... Exactly. So if you're doing... A, a dumbbell would be an even better example, right? This would be full range of motion. Mm -hmm. Long length partial would be here. Gotcha. You're staying in the stretch. With these, once you got to the point of failure and you could no longer do full reps with full range then you of motion, the other half of you're the doing motion. long length partial. You're not doing shortened partials, gotcha. okay? So on a squat, for example, a shortened partial would be this. Yeah. That's not great because no. you, your, your quads never get stretched, okay? But this is a lengthened partial. So now you your want quads the long are ones under until a lot you're of so stretch. burnt and you end on the short form one. So Say that again? You, you want to essentially do full range, then you go to the, yeah. uh, what do we call it, the long one? The lengthened. The lengthened yeah. one. So you're getting the full stretch. And then you, if you want, you can end it on the last little bit of partial from the, the second, the, what do you call that one? So it's lengthened because the muscle is stretched. So when you stretch something, it gets longer. Yeah. Right? So when, when I look at my quad, here, it's shortened. It's not stretched. When I go down here, look yeah. how much it's getting longer. It's getting longer. The Gosh. muscle is stretching. And that's where you want your partials. partial. If, yeah. the, if, you, if you were to isolate what part of the range of motion gives you the most hypertrophy, it's not uniform. Like this doesn't give me as much hypertrophy 
as this does. Got you. Now, just staying in there. Does that mean you should always cut out the shortened part of the lift? No, but it's, it gives you clues that if you can't get full range and you can continue going with the stretch, keep, the set keep it going keep because the your set muscle is, is near exhaustion yeah. and you're staying in that most hypertrophic part of the lift. Yeah. Bodybuilders have known this for a while. When you look at bodybuilders doing the curls, old school guys had to write. They, and a, a mistake a lot of people make when they do partials is they just, their form gets really sloppy and mm -hmm. they lose all control. That's not a good partial. Yeah. A good partial, you still have control on the positive and the negative. You, bro, you and me at times, like how we just said, explain the difference of like the, you know, when you're fully lengthening or you're lengthening. Like I'll, I'll kind of forget like, oh, uh, should I do the partials up here or should I do them down here? I kind of, exactly. in the moment you sort of forget sometimes. So, so think about if I was going to stretch this muscle, yep. what would I do? And that's the part of the rep that's probably giving you the best bang for your buck on Damn. almost every exercise. It's a good ass tip. Yeah, there you go. Link in bio, go subscribe. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe here too. <laughs> Appreciate that. So on the last set, we did 10 to 12 reps to failure. Failure means can't get full range of motion. Then we did three or four breaths, and then we did four myo reps, also to full range of motion. Mm -hmm. So a myo rep is you keep the weight the same, so it's like a drop set. With a drop set, you take a little break, drop the weight back, yeah. except there's no drop. You Got just it. do extra reps. For about, about 30 to 40% of the first, as much as you can, RP10 essentially, right? It, it's RP10 and it, it's beyond, really. Yeah. And it ends up being usually only three or four reps, and the rationale behind it is, if you were to look at a set of 10, what's the, I'll ask you, what's the most hypertrophic part of the set? Would it be the first Eight five reps or the last the five last reps? Five, the, last the last three, five, right? four, yeah. So with myo reps, you're you getting get more of those effective reps toward the end of a set where the muscle is nearly exhausted. That's mm. the point of it. And then after the myo reps, then we do lengthen partials. Lengthen partials and end on the other partials. Here, do you go wide pull or do you like to go? 45 degrees. 45 degrees. So is this, uh, this is gonna be a combo of lat and mid trap. Yeah. That's it. This one, we're gonna get a mixture of lats and mid back. And the cool thing about this machine, great curve. Is, yeah, you can overload the beginning of the range of motion more or the end. We wanna overload the beginning a little bit more. Why? Because for one, you're stronger here, and so it matches the resistance profile. The strength curve of the back matches the, the profile of the machine better. And secondly, the, quicker, right? the lengthen yep. is the more hypertrophic part, so we want to emphasize it. You get there quick. Go, 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 go. Uh, come on, come on. Christian! <laughs> Christian! Can I get a physique update? Woo! Wow. The delts, bro. I think I think your delts have come up. I think also, Christian, one, one of the things to answer your question, I think the biggest improvement I notice is like muscle maturity. It, bro, it kicks in like 28. Yeah. That's a real you are, thing. You're like grainier. But you are definitely harder. a row without all the bicep movement or you can think of it like a horizontal shrug so instead of shrugging up for the upper traps we're shrugging back for the mid traps shrug squeeze so you're squeezing your shoulder blades together without actually needing to involve the biceps too much good <clears throat> squeeze rest at the bottom and do one more <gasps> Big breath and big squeeze. Pause, 
And down, good. Really good. Get it up. Yeah. That's what he said. <laughs> wow, this, this machine really gets the same yeah. stuff, huh? Yeah. Go. Come on. Uh, uh, okay. Are you wanting the are you wanting this line to be parallel to the ground essentially? It's basically just like the handle on this machine is really low. And so you basically want your arms to be moving out in a straight line. So in order to get into position, you either have to like kneel down or just go like that. Does that make sense? Here, do you recommend fucking your almost like really, really getting? I do because you'll get more of a stretch that way. So this, this, and then. Yeah, and then you can slack the the wrists if you find that improves the mind muscle connection. Some people find it takes their forearms out of it, which is a good thing. I wanted to take you through a science based workout. Yeah. The reality is, if people don't have access to the type of the same type of equipment we have, also I think a science based workout would could be a pull up a barbell row and an easy bar bicep curl, yeah. done. That's probably close to equally as effective. And, and sometimes I get that kind of criticism. It's like, just row and do pull-ups. And it's like, hey, if that works for you and you can overload that and keep doing that for a decade and that's still interesting enough for you to keep motivated, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. But there are other ways to do things that might have slight edges, especially for certain individuals. That's it. It's not that if you don't train this way, you're training suboptimally. It just means this is also an effective way to train that has scientific rationale. Yeah. That's it. The scientific rationale as well, that like you take those, the, the things that you learn from things like this video and the tips that Jeff's giving about the strength curves, about ways to increase the intensity on your sets, whether it be like taking three, four breaths, or if you want to do a drop, or if you want to do a, you know, like things with the tempo, all of that stuff lengthening the muscle and doing the, the pulse reps, right? But controlling them, all of those things can be implemented across your training and the movements that you're selecting to do. And I think uh, what makes a good lifter, like an experienced lifter, is experience. It's, it's understanding and truly understanding the science behind what you're doing. You're not just getting in the gym and ripping weight. You know what I mean? And then you know what you're doing, everything is intentional. If you don't like the training you're doing, then you're more likely to not see the progress. Whether, even if it was optimal on paper, it's like if you enjoy the style, you'll be in there, you'll get more, and you'll get more progress. Optimal goes out the window if it's not sustainable. Damn. Huh? Put that on the damn huh? shirt. <laughs> wow. Quote by Jim. That was, that was it. <laughs> wow, that's gonna be all over everywhere. I'm here all day. <laughs> What was it? Oh, come on. <laughs> you missed it. It's not, no. Optimal goes out the window if it's not sustainable. Damn. That's money. Man. There you go. That is a wrap on the scientific back, whatever we call this video. Thank you, Jeff. Hope you have fun, man. It was an honor showing you around Alpha Land. Um, congrats on all the success that you have achieved with your channel. All of the, it's, just the people, the amount of people that he, I can see he's impacted just from him walking the place and training with me once here is just like, it's so cool to see, man. And uh, like I said, no one deserves it more, the success, than he does. And thank you for watching. Subscribe. Try and implement some of the things, some of the little nuggets in this video to your own training. Get a little better every single day. And tomorrow, we're 10 days out, baby. 10 days. So subscribe and stay tuned for some sick show prep content. Oh, and giveaway, right? Yep. <laughs> We're gonna give away three of Jeff's programs for free. He don't even know it yet, but that's what we're giving away, <laughs> okay? So all you gotta do is share this video on the story. Share this video on the story. On, your, on their Instagram story. On your Instagram you. story and tag me. A little recording of how to do that now, right here, okay? So you're gonna go down, you're gonna click that button, okay? Then you're gonna go to your Instagram, right? And then it's going to, you're gonna click that link, you're gonna add the link, you're gonna share it to your story, and at me, at Christian's Fitness, and at Jeff Nippard. 
swipe it off the screen if you want, or you can leave it. It's up to you. And post. What? 24 hours. 24 hours.